since uh, the hospital said we can use the room, except we can't have any more than 30 people. So we're not going to, um, you know, hold a meeting and then start turning people away because you came in as number 31 or 32, whatever. Um, so we're looking for, um, for a location. A um, couple of board members are checking out locations. And if we're lucky, um, maybe by September, October, we will have a, um, a meeting site where we can meet in person um, and more than 30 people and still do it safely. And that is according to whatever status COVID is in too, um, when that comes around. But in the meantime, uh, we are looking and um, hopefully we'll be meeting in person soon. Um, and I know a lot of clubs across, uh, at least across Massachusetts are, are, some are meeting in person, some are just continuing on with Zoom. Um, but uh, more and more groups are starting to get together. So that, that's, that's a hope for September. Um, also, it's a great time of the year. It's nice and warm now. Uh, go hunting the fox boxes. Uh, we've been trying to get them out once or twice a month. If you, uh, if you haven't hunted them, they're a lot of fun. It's, um, you get a hint and you get really, uh, the hint will drop you within um, two or three miles of the fox box and then you can ID and hit um, hit a certain key and it'll activate the Fox box if you're close enough and it'll transmit and then use your directional antenna and try to find it. And um, it's uh, it can be a lot of fun. It can be extremely aggravating, um, but mostly it's a lot of fun, especially when you start getting closer, the signal gets stronger and you start having to attenuate it and, uh, and then find the area and get out of your car and walk to it. Um, the Connecticut group um, has, I think five fox boxes they hide. Uh, we've got two, and uh, pretty much across New England, from what I've been reading, they're they're popping up everywhere. Um, there was a a, a park in uh, Norwich, Connecticut. They hid seven fox boxes this past weekend, and uh, people went down there and found them when they had the time. Meriden's been hiding fox boxes. Eastern Mass is too. So uh, everybody's getting into the game. And um, it's a lot of fun. If, uh, if anybody's interested in learning how to do so, they can uh, reach out to me or to anyone and uh, we can put you in touch with uh, the right information. Um, and it's something you can do with friends and with family or by yourself. Uh, you can socially distance or you can group yourselves together with, uh, with, with other, other friends and, um, or other people. Um, and you can get in, if you've never done it, you can, build an antenna and put together an attenuator um, as long as you have uh, an HT, even if you get a Balfang HT. So you got a $25 radio, $20 to build a um, um, tape measure antenna and another 20 bucks for an attenuator. So for under $75, you can have a radio and go hunting. Uh, you do need a, at least a tech license to do so because you need to be able to transmit and trigger the, um, the Fox box. Um, and all. So anyway, so that's a lot of fun. Um, Just got one thing, Larry. Yeah, go ahead, Ken. Box box one is in hiding. Watch tomorrow morning for an announcement or sometime tomorrow. I just got to uh, make a few tweaks of work and be raised from and awoke or put it that way. But it is out there and will be uh, announced tomorrow sometime cool. tomorrow. Cool. Cool. I, I'll, hopefully I'll get out there hunting too. It's supposed to be a beautiful weekend. So um it's a good day to uh, to drive around and chase a little box. Um, so that's that's the Fox Box. And um, as things happen, you'll see it posted in the Facebook group and the email group and the WMA Fox Hunters group um, that they've been hidden um, and uh, any clues. And then a picture, hopefully, of uh, something nearby or what's been so found. When I went on a hunt a couple of weeks ago, uh, two guys came up from Connecticut. One was down in uh, Marlboro area and the other one was down by the Connecticut shore and they came all the way up here just to hunt. Um, so they have a bad if they're, they're driving an hour and a half just to get to us to hunt for the Fox box. But anyways, um, so that's the Fox box. So tonight we've got uh, elections, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so most of our board is staying on and two of our board members are changing. Um, I'm the president of the club and I'm staying on um, we have Marcel A1HF has stepped down for personal reasons. Um, 
He's got some health issues and family health issues. And Bill W5JAZ is stepping up in his place. And I think Bill said he's, because he, he, he's a jazz teacher for Enfield High School. And I think they had a performance tonight. So um, I, if he joins us, it'll be late, but I, I doubt he'll be joining us tonight. Um, George KC1V, who's on here somewhere, is um, stepping in as treasurer and Dwayne is stepping down. Um, Paul NF1G is staying on as secretary. Newsletter is Ken KD1KU. At large is Bob W1OJN, and he's down in North Carolina for his son's wedding right now. Um, Najin AB1ZA is staying on as technical, and Gary is staying on, A1UE is staying on as um, program. Now, so before we, we, we do some sort of a, a voting on this, um, I'd like to know if anyone would like to step up and run for one of these positions um, uh, opposing anybody on the list. Okay, so that uh, that makes it easy. Um, does anybody have any issues with anybody that's stepping up for or is staying in on the list? Well, we got an active crowd tonight. Okay, so I'd like a, a, a raise of hands for um, everybody that's voting for the um, for the existing board or for the board as I listed it. Um, if you can just raise your hands and all in favor, I guess. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. Uh, our new board is officially elected. And thank you for your vote. Nice, simple, and easy. Um, and I'll, okay, so the big thing that's going on right now is at the end of the month, uh, June 23rd to 20, uh, 24th to 26th, we have field day. And everybody has been itching to get together and uh, meet with everybody and uh, as a group, as a club, we haven't done that since the holiday party in December. Um, so this is a perfect time to get everybody together and put together field day and operate. Field day runs, we're going to be setting up at from 1 p.m. on Friday afternoon, the 24th, and um, setting everything up and then tearing down and putting everything away to go home on um, by 3 p.m. usually Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> All right, let's we're gonna mute Chris. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, so it's always an active period of time for the club and what we're looking for. We've got a few people that have volunteered. Uh, we've got the food taken care of and we have towing to the park taken care of. Uh, we're looking for people Friday afternoon to set up. And um, John, you have a question? You're muted. I'll set up on Friday. Okay. All right. Man. Let me pull my. Uh... I'll be there too. Yeah, I've already got you down, Larry. Um, All right. I'll definitely be there. <laughs> yeah, I've already got you down too, Chris. <laughs> I can be there from one to five. Maybe... Okay. All right. Wait a minute, let me. Uh... Yeah, and Larry. I'm expecting to be there. Okay. I'll just leave it at that. A1YYN. Um, let's see. Does somebody else say they, they're available on Friday? Possibly on Friday, but definitely on Saturday and Sunday. Okay. I think Larry, Gary says he's going to be there too. Is that all? Yeah, Gary's okay, already on Gary's the list. Larry, did you get me, sir? John? Yep, yep, I got you, John. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. And you got me, Smitty? Yep. And you got me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think you're near the top of the list, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> Larry, you got me on Friday, Larry. Okay. All right, let me put you down there, Ted. Uh, K3FUC. Okay. So, anyways, Friday afternoon, we're going to be assembling antennas and we're going to be putting up some towers. Um, we have military towers that we put up. Now, all this is fine and good. We got people to set up, but we also need operators. So far, I've got um, three people volunteering to run the CW stations. And I've got, um, other than Gary's satellite station, and Larry and Chris are the only people that have volunteered to run the sideband station. So we're looking for ops for sideband. We're looking for ops for CW from 2 p.m. Saturday through 2 p.m. Sunday. Um, 
Would anybody like to volunteer? And if you're muted, just unmute yourself and uh, George. Yeah. Yeah, Larry, I'll be available uh, for CW operating. Okay, cool. And I'll uh, probably, I should be there on Friday uh, up until about five o'clock. Okay, that's great. Uh, let's see, operate CW, yes. Okay. Um, would anybody like to volunteer to operate um, Cyban? It's a very rare occasion where I've got more CW ops than I do Cyban ops. Um, Larry Kitty one RV is going to be running on 20 meter Cyban. Um, uh, 40 this year. Uh, I'll I'm be sorry, on 20. 40 meter Cyban, sorry. Chris is going to be running on 20 meter Cyban with his station. We'll have uh, CW on 40 meter CW. Um, so we're looking for ops for different times of the day. Um, you don't have to decide right now. You can drop me an email at w1ast at arl.net. Um, but we've got I've got a, an operating schedule and um, pick a time between 2 p.m. Sunday Saturday to 2 p.m. Sunday and pick a band and um, we'll slot you in there and then we'll work our band captains around you. So if um, if you want to work something and you know if you want to come in at, at midnight and work from 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. that's great because the rest of us will be dead tired and we're usually asleep um, or whenever you want to work. Or if you want to work and you're new at this and you need somebody to sit down and mentor you with it, let me know and we'll pair you up with somebody and teach you how to do it. It's uh, field day is something that that's everybody's favorite um, operating event. And it's a lot of fun. It's something most of us look forward to year after year after year. And um, if you've done it for the first time, uh, it's usually you can't wait until the next time. How many times have you done it now, Chris? Like five years? Uh, I think this will be, yeah, about five. Four, no. four running it. Uh, this will be my, like my fifth year altogether. Yeah. And uh, how would you describe the, the first year or two when you are bringing uh as an operator um a lot of stumbling over my my words and stuff <laughs> <laughs> but you know uh, by 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 sunday afternoon sunday morning or whatever you kind of get it going and you kind of get in the rhythm of calling cq and all that but yeah but anyway so I mean, it's um it's something that every there'll be people here to help you with if you've never been on the air or if you're unsure um you know we'll be glad to sit you down and and help you or you operate phone and somebody will be logging for you. Now we're gonna be doing computer logging. Uh, we're gonna be using uh, N3FJP logger, nice and simple and easy. We won't have the problems that we had with N1MM last year. Um, that we'll be using a dedicated logging program. We're gonna need people to come in um, Sunday around noontime or one o'clock-ish and help tear everything down and pack it away back into the trailer. Um, and we also have a raffle going on too. So anybody that works more than three hours, three hours or more as an operator or as a helper, an assistant, helping build the antennas or taking the antennas down or setting up the stations, whatever, you automatically get entered into a raffle and we're raffling off um, a pair of Heil headphones and Ooh. a soldering station too. So it, um, what you brand is that soldering station? Uh, I don't remember the, the headphones are high. I, I don't remember the name of this, the brand of the oh. soldering station, but, um, you know, so you get a chance to, uh, uh, to win something. It's free. All you have to do is put in three hours of time and you automatically get entered in. And we've been doing this for a number of years now. Um, let's see here. What else can I say? Um, Chris, how many, how many, tents do we have does the club own is that two tents uh i think we got three three I tents know. maybe or four no 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 i don't have that many and maybe That's... it is two all right no I'll, we I'll... have three we had one for 20 uh 20 side band 40 side band and i think the cw last year was also a tent as well yeah that was my tent so oh oh so then it's two then Okay, so so we'll have the three stations set up in tents. We'll have be running off a generator. Saturday evening, we're going to be doing a uh, hamburg and hot dog dinner. Um, I've got volunteers to do the shopping and the cooking. And um, if anybody's going to be attending that, please let me know so we can make sure we buy enough food. 
It's um, sort of a semi HCRA picnic and um, field day. So come and visit, come and operate, come and eat um, and come and socialize and have fun. Um, feel free to bring a chair, sit down and talk. And if you don't want to operate, just uh, walk around and say hello and uh, and see the sights and, and everything. Um, but field day is a lot of fun and it's hard to experience it if you don't attend. Uh, question? All right, who is that? Somebody's got to mute themselves. Um, I don't know how, Larry. I just can't figure out how to unmute it. Oh, bud, okay, I'll, I'll mute you. You're gone, okay. <laughs> okay, um, so anyway, so that, that's what everything's doing. Um, drop me an email, w1ast at arl.net. If you can operate, if you can set up, um, spread the word around to everybody. We need more ops. We need more set up people uh, as such. Um, so that's coming up June 20. Yes. Yeah, go ahead, Chet. You want me to put me down for set up on Friday? Okay. And I'll probably be there Sunday afternoon. Okay, great. There's something wrong with your audio, but uh, LWF. All right, let me just give me one sec and set up there down. Uh, there we go. Okay, all right, I got you in there, Chet. Thank you very much. Um, so something else going on um, that you might want to participate in, uh, 13 Colonies is coming up uh, July 1st to 7th. You can operate and earn a plat and earn a um, certificate. It's a lot of fun working all 13 colonies plus special stations. Um, we have um, in Massachusetts, we'll be running K2H and I have a team of 30 ops this year. Um, so we're gonna make a run to make a lot of contacts. Uh, last year we made a little over 15,000 contacts and I'm hoping for more than 20,000 this year. How many um, ops did we have last year? Last year, I think we had 18 ops. So I've added, oh, wow. we've added a lot of ops. It, awesome. We're gonna really try to um, try to give New Hampshire a run for their money for the number of contacts. <laughs> I don't know, we haven't, we've never been very closer than 7,000 contacts, but maybe this year we can. Um, so that's coming up uh, July 1st to July 7th. You can go to uh, 13colonies.us and learn more about it. You can go to, um, KU2US on QRZ will tell you more about it too um, and all. So that, that's a lot of fun. You can earn a, uh, a certificate depending on what you work. And um, you can also, each of the different states have a, has a very special QSL card for this year, for every year. But for this year, um, they're all individual. Nothing duplicates from past years. So it's, uh, it's a lot of fun there. Um, if you haven't heard, uh, I'm putting together a booth at the uh, the Big E in September. Um, we were given a um, a four thousand dollar booth in the Better Living Center. We're putting together. Uh, we have a. Uh, we're going to be doing a special event station. Uh, Nancy One Echo is the call sign. We're going to be running for 17 days. Uh, ICOM is going to be loaning us gear. We're going to be putting antennas up on the roof of the Better Living Center. We're going to be doing um, a heiress contact, um, not necessarily from the booth, but in a different location in a stadium inside the uh, um, the Big E Fairgrounds. Um, we've teamed up with New England SciTech and Natick, and they teach homeschool kids. So um, this is going to be a first on many, many fronts. And um, I myself and a few others had a meeting with the president and his staff of the Big E last week, and they are super excited about this, uh, so much so that there was talk of putting in a permanent ham radio station at the Big E fairgrounds oh. where we might have a, um, um, a club shack and a club antennas and gear where we can go and operate. Um, it's just in the talking stage right now. Um, it probably won't happen this year. It probably won't happen until next year. Um, but they were very excited. And there's also a possibility of um, uh, the president and his staff taking ham radio li uh, uh, license classes uh, after the Big E. So 
right now we need people to operate the biggie um, um, on each of the different days. Well, I'm working with, in fact, a, a, an email just went out today to 150 clubs throughout New England. Um, we've got, uh, besides the HCRA, the Barnstable Amateur Radio Club, the Billerica Amateur Radio Club. Uh, I can't remember the name. There's a big one in Maine, too. Um, Meriden down in Connecticut. Um, and a couple of others have committed to helping and staffing the, uh, the booth. The state days are going to be easy to staff because those will be the different states and the different clubs coming in. So uh, an average day at the Big E is going to be 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. So we meet, need to man it for the full 12 hours each. Um, we're going to be breaking that down into a six hour uh, windows where everybody will be a, uh, from 930 to four and then from 330 to 10 p.m. Um, so we need people to volunteer. If you go to nediv.arrl.org um, and go to the Big E section, there's a Google form sign up there. You can pick a day, pick a time, pick multiple days, multiple times, and, um, and help out and operate. Um, so we're going to have, uh, we're going to be running the special event station. We're hoping to have uh, be setting up uh, D Star and DMR and maybe a Fusion hotspot um, at the booth. We're going to um, going to be showing modern ham radio to the public. Uh, where the booth is, there's a chance that we'll see uh, we'll have forty thousand to sixty thousand people passing the booth every day based on where we are. Um, so it's going to be a big thing. We need people. We need support. We need help. And the main thing is <clears throat> you don't have to be a tech person because we're going to be sitting up when you're talking to the public. We're going to be starting out talking uh, on everybody, you know, a basic level. And if the person you're talking to brings it up a level into the techie area, then you can continue up. But we don't want to glaze people's eyes over and have them walk away. So we're going to start them off very simple. Uh, we'll have sort of an instruction manual and everything on how to talk to the public, but it's going to be very exciting. We got 17 days of this. Um, I've secured a professional um, creative group. They're going to live stream the Ares contact and, um, and produce video for us. Um, and that's going to go out and that's going to be recorded. And eventually it'll work its way up to the HCRA uh, YouTube page also. Um, NASA has just told us that the Irish contact will take place the second week of the Big E, and um, that's all we know. And unless we get lucky, we won't know exactly what day until 10 days before. Uh, so that's up in the air. But the Big E has offered to do publicity, um, which will be great, which will bring a lot of stuff in, a lot of people in, a lot of publicity for our club and for all the clubs in New England. Um, so we need your help. Sign up, go to the website. The websites are listed in Zero Beat and we'll be pushing them out on the email list and on Facebook more and more often. We're just three and a half months away. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be long, long days. Uh, it's gonna be sore feet and um, the reward should be plentiful for all of us. It's it should drive uh, interested people. Uh, we'll be trying to we'll be compiling a list of people interested in getting their licenses and being in the Pioneer Valley as the premier club. Um, we could have a, a a good size ham class um, within a month or two after the Big E ends, and um, of course if people get their licenses, they'll also join the club. So it's beneficial to the club. And we'll be distributing the rest of the list across New England to the clubs that help. And they're also interested in doing classes with whoever signs up for classes. Uh, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be something, uh, it's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be um, a showcase of modern ham radio. And um, we hope you'll help out. And if you wanna know more, again, it's, uh, Nancy Echo, David India Victor dot org, New England Division, um, ARL.org. 
and then click on the, um, the big E. And um, there's information there. We have a groups.io group, and we're going to be starting a, um, a Zoom session uh, next Tuesday also for the volunteers. So if you have a skill that you might want to volunteer with, if you want to just be in the booth, we're looking for four people per session so uh, or more. So I know Barnstable is coming in on September 22nd with six people, and they're going to be manning the booth in the morning. Um, there's a group from Maine that, or uh, Connecticut that said they're coming in. They'll take all of Connecticut Day, which is September 21st. Um, but it's not so much the state days. I'm looking for help beyond the state days. And um, hopefully you'll be part of it. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be tiring. It's going to be exciting. Um, you can work the special event station. We can talk to the public. And we can get the word out there and hopefully generate a bunch of new hands. So that's the Big E, September 16th to October 2nd. Um, anybody have any questions? Jurgen, you got to unmute yourself. So, Larry, how about the ticket to get in? We're working on that. We've applied for two grants. Um, we applied for a $10,000 grant. Actually, we applied for a $10,000 and a $3,000 grant. Um, and unfortunately, we won't know until July if we get them. If we do get them uh, or one of them, uh, we'll be buying a, uh, a bunch of tickets at half price, which are $8 each. If we don't get them, um, then everybody's going to have to pay their own way to come in. Um, that's every day right that's every, every day, day. Wanna... yeah okay yeah um also with parking i've been told there is no special parking it's ten dollars per car so if you carpool in you can save yourself parking um and there's uh, i spent a lot of time after our meeting with another group at the Big E, and they said there just is no parking not not for those that work the booth not for those that have um booths or um or whatnot, whatever. And um, obviously when you're in, you're in. Um, and if you volunteer to work all 12 hours, you know, there's 150 food vendors. And um, so you have your choice of food if you wanna go out for lunch or dinner or a snack. Um, so we're crossing our fingers on the, uh, on the grants. We, we submitted the grants uh, in March, so. Uh, we're hoping they come through. I've been told we might because I have some ins at the league, but until they actually happen, I won't know. If they do happen, then we'll be able to reimburse everybody. Well, we'll be able to buy tickets, half price tickets, and we'll be able to reimburse everybody for parking too. So that's the best I can offer right now. Um, did you have a question? Uh, somebody else had a question? Smitty had a question, I think. Okay, go ahead, Charlie, wherever you are. Where'd you uh, go? Yeah, uh, you basically answered it. I was going to ask about tickets, admission, and parking. Um, if you're going to do a lot of the days, if you're going to be there often, you can buy a full pass for the biggie for the whole the whole time, and it's a lot cheaper than paying individual days. I've done that in the past, just visiting, and it saves you a lot of money. You can't get a parking pass for the whole biggie, but you can get a gate pass that takes care of the whole biggie for like the price of I don't know. It used to be like seven days worth of, of fees so it was quite reasonable not sure what it is now uh i don't know about parking um but yeah there is a there is a a, a show ticket price um and such and we're hoping if if the weather is good last year they had a little under 1.5 million people that visited over the 17 wow. days and with um with that was record breaking too i think it, it was they broke a lot of records then and um if COVID is calmer this year it's very possible that they can exceed that by a lot um so it's 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 a good time to to do a ham radio booth there hasn't been one done in uh 15 to 18 years and the one that was done um, last time was in the 4-h building it was dark and extremely noisy in there and it was tiny so we have a, like I said, we have a 300 square foot booth. We've got um, uh, displays we're working on and um, uh, it should be pretty awesome. We're gonna need help setting up. We're gonna need help tearing down. Um, I know I've already I got do you a, down. 
Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I've already got you listed up, Chris, for uh, for <laughs> doing the antennas. Yeah, I can do all the antennas, all that good stuff. Um, so we're, uh, you know, there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes, but the big thing right now is is operators, um, uh, people to man the booth, um, and we'll go from there. You know, you just got to be able to talk to people when they come in. Uh, and as I mentioned, ICOM said they're going to um, give us uh, a 7610, a 7300, a 9700, and I think an ID52 they're going to loan us. 9700 will be pretty cool to play with. Yeah, I, in fact, the guy from ICOM was so excited, he said he might come fly up and spend a couple of days with us. Oh, nice. So, um, so that's going to work out really well. Um, and you'll see more, uh, well, you won't, you won't see much uh, since it's the last zero beat, but you'll see things in the, uh, the email list and Facebook and keep checking that New England division, uh, ARL site, cause there's going to be more news as things happen, but check your schedules, sign up for a day, sign up for a couple of days and come join us and, um, uh, be part of the 2022, um, big E booth. It, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be great. Um, let's see. Larry. Here. Yep. Yeah, it's Jim. Go I ahead, Jim. I think you can hear me. Yep. Um, yep. Why wouldn't we as a club purchase the $8 tickets whether or not we get the grant? Because then everybody will still save that money. Right. Well, it's... Uh, it, um, well, I mean, we, we could... The club could purchase a group of bank of tickets... Um, but the board has pretty much told me they don't want to put any other money in before they know what other groups are spending um, as such. I understand, but it just if we have an opportunity to buy a lower price tickets, there's no reason not to. Right. No, I, I mean, understand that. I'll, I'll... Listen in. <laughs> well, we've got some of the board members here tonight, but not, not I, all. Obviously. I mean, it's like you know, there's a sale, but we're, we're not going to take advantage of it. Yeah, anyway, no, said. Thank no, you. no, I, I, I agree. And I'll, I'll, I'll throw that back at them again, if they want to buy, you know, a, a group of maybe 50 tickets for the club and, and let the club members participate uh, in that. Um, but based on what I asked them uh, a couple of weeks ago to, as a loan that was going to be paid back, they said, no. So went about it uh, different ways and, uh, and we'll see, but uh, good idea. Good idea. Any other comments for the, uh, the biggie? Anybody have questions? Um, if you have any ideas or whatever, contact me. Um, we're, uh, we're making this work. Um, Ken, anything about zero beat? Uh, no, just, uh, like I said, the last one until September right now, that's why it was so much about, uh, you know, the biggie and all that and field base, you know, in this last issue. So about it for right now. I was hoping to put a smaller one out, you know, field day issue, but uh, crammed it all into one. And boy, did I just get a dirty look. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's about it. Oh, and so, Vanessa had her hand up too. Oh, before. go ahead, Vanessa. Whoops, where are you? No, I, I was gonna mention that the link in the zero bit for the biggie volunteering form it doesn't work for me but i went through the website that you mentioned and that works okay oh, all right okay that's good well at least the other one works and uh i don't know why um the link in zero b didn't work but um but at least the any division works. one works um ken maybe you can check that and and then repost it up there for future yeah, i'll uh, take a look and okay if need be correct Okay. Any other questions about field day, about the Big E, about anything else going on? Um, any announcements for other things going on? Um, any comments or suggestions? Um, nothing else? Oh, Bud, go ahead. Wait, you got to unmute yourself, dude. I'm going to try and make with the setup on field day also. Okay, great, great. Okay. All right, I, sounds good. I, I'll put you down and uh, thank you much. Um, okay, if there's nothing else, no other announcements or anything, uh, nobody from Franklin County is here, so I can't ask them. 
Um, well, uh, I'm sorry. You have to unmute me. I think it's me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Great. Well, thanks everybody for coming out tonight. We've got a new board and uh, we've got some uh, people signing up for field day. Um, wish everybody a, a nice, safe weekend. Hope to see you at field day and uh, stay tuned for all the other exciting things happening uh, with the club as we, uh, we work our way to the fall. And hopefully we'll have, like I said, hopefully we'll have a meeting site. Hopefully we'll have in-person meetings and um, um, you know, work our way to uh, all sorts of exciting things and maybe getting back to some sort of normalcy. But uh, seven threes, everybody, and uh, have Larry, a great evening. Larry, yeah. Before we close, I just uh, I see a call sign that uh, I recognize from uh, as a regular from the slow speed tests, and I'd like to say hello to Ann and one uh, YL. Uh, YL, if yep, uh, she's... if she's listening, uh, she's been one of a. I looked in the log, and she's in there a whole bunch of times. So it was nice to uh, uh, see the call sign there. Yeah, she and her Hi. husband, Keith, live up in Greenfield. Go ahead, Ann. I am here. I don't know if my microphone works on this setup. It's a new setup. But yes, I love the slow speed net. And I love uh, um, the SSTs. So um, I appreciate that there's other people getting on doing CW. I love CW. So, so nice to um, say hi. Hello. <laughs> hi, George. Hi, everybody else. And uh, thanks, Larry. And uh, nice to see you all tonight. Okay, sounds good. Okay, any any other last comments before we close the meeting down? All right. Again, thanks, everybody for uh, joining us and everybody have a great weekend. 73. Good night, everybody. 73.